Ukraine's nuclear energy chief Petro Kotin has accused Russia of causing a real danger of a nuclear and radioactive catastrophe. That's after missile strikes cut external power to all of Ukraine's nuclear power plants, causing them to shut down on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Russia says it is in favor of a protection zone around the, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant on its own terms, that is. The power station is in Ukraine, but in territory currently occupied by Russian forces. It's also been hit by artillery strikes on numerous occasions. We'll get some independent analysis of that in a second. But first, here's Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Ryabkov. As we understand it, besides contacts with Kyiv, the IAEA is also holding dialogue with the officials of some Western countries. We hope that this dialogue will help to convince Zelensky's regime to stop the criminal actions against Saporizhia nuclear power plant. From our side, we are doing everything possible to solve the issue and to do so without delay. And Elena Sokova is the executive director of the Vienna Center for Disarmament and Non-Proliferation. She joins us now from the Austrian capital. Welcome back to the day. Russia says it's doing all it can to solve the issue. What's your opinion on that? Um, I don't think that, that uh, Russia is uh, doing everything it can. Um, well, first of all, uh, as reported earlier, the, all the nuclear power plant had to be shut down yesterday because of the Russian airstrikes on the energy infrastructure in Ukraine. Uh, luckily, uh, or uh, we, we face a situation where uh, the Ukrainian side uh, and the Russian near Zaporizhia were able to restore uh, electrical power to that leads to these nuclear power plants, which is very important for the safe and secure operation of these nuclear power plants. However, um, the uh, conditions that Russia has put forward for the so-called protection zone uh, that the international atomic energy is trying to negotiate for a number of months now do not sound uh, credible to me. Well, first of all, the, the demand is that the Ukraine uh, basically um, uh, promises not to reoccupy uh, this territory and the nuclear power plant. And I don't think these conditions would be something that Ukraine could accept. Um, but um, uh, frankly speaking, the situation where we see that all nuclear power plants are now being cut off from the uh, electric electrical power, which is critical, as I mentioned, to their operation, is very concerning. Uh, the head of the International Atomic Agency, Rossi, have been saying for months now that we are playing with the fire here mm -hmm. and that we are on the brink of uh, having an accident, radiological accident. And I fully agree with that. How close are we to uh, what Ukraine calls a nuclear and radioactive catastrophe? What could happen that could trigger such a scenario? Well, uh, as when uh, there is no um, reliable power supply to the nuclear power plants themselves, which me it means that the its safety systems and security system only rely on the diesel operator, on um, diesel generators, which have a limited capacity. They can probably last for several days, but that's not a reliable supply. Um, the issue here is the uh, continuous pumping of water that cooled down the reactors. Without that circulation of water, we could face a situation that is was similar to the meltdown of reactors at Fukushima. And we uh, still remember quite vividly, it was in 2011, the consequences of that. So that's what um, kind of... Um, uh, catastrophe uh, is pot uh, potential of the catastrophe that we're facing in Ukraine. And but that's it's a indeed scenario, a big concern. Excuse me, that's a scenario yeah. everybody wants to avoid, right? This playing Absolutely. with fire going terribly wrong. So why is Zaporizhia still being targeted? 
that's a big question. And uh, we still don't know uh, who is responsible. We, can, we have our uh, probably guesses and, and assumptions on who is responsible. But we are in a situation of war. And we know that in addition to regular troops, at least we know from, on, from the Russian side, there are all these mercenary groups that may not necessarily be taking orders from, from the Russian army. But uh, we don't have a mechanism that can establish it. We do have uh, inspectors from the International Atomic Energy at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plants, but they are not specialists in assessment of um, you know ballistic uh, uh, data and things like that that could confirm one way or another, and that's not the the job of the agency or inspectors of doing it. So we still don't know, um, but we certainly know that it was Russia who was responsible for targeting uh, the electric. Uh, infrastructure, electricity infrastructure, and the power lines themselves in the attacks uh, a day or two ago that led to the shutdown of these reactors. So a safe zone and having a capable personnel there is tremendously important. Do you think this is something that we are going to see in the foreseeable future? A safe zone that, that, that the Russians and the Ukrainians can agree on and that the Russians would abide by? Um, my personal opinion that uh, the probability of reaching an agreement is quite low. Mm. Um, both first and foremost because of the positions of the two sides are too far apart. And for Ukraine to recognize, uh, at least in this arrangement, that uh, the um, uh, nuclear power plant is now under the Russian control um, in some form of the international agreement is probably not something that they are prepared to agree to. But for me, the biggest question is that even if they agree on something uh, of a protection zone, how this zone will be enforced? Who will be the parties enforcing it? That is the biggest question to me. So to me, that even there, there is an agreement. Uh, we'll have to I'm leave it there. I'm not sure how long it lasts. We're running out of time, unfortunately. Thank you so much. No, thank you. My pleasure.